What is up guys and good morning. So today I'm going to be testing and the alignment of my CNC machine. It's been a while since I booted it. And after the move, I don't know if it's still calibrated. Now this is a really important thing with CNC machine. There's a problem called the binding issue. And what that is, is basically while it's moving, it gets stuck, but the software thinks it didn't get stuck. So then everything gets misaligned. For example, you wanted to move 10 millimeters. It got stuck for those two millimeters on the way there. And then you ended up traveling only eight millimeters. But if you're cutting, then that just screwed everything up. So for example, you have a spe special drill bit that you're gonna you know, cut only one millimeter at a time with. And because of that misalignment, the, 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 the one millimeter that was supposed to cut ended up being like back to like four millimeters. So once you go in, you just completely break the end mill. And that's not the only issue, just everything else will become misaligned. So you gotta, you know, make sure it's working. All right, so right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna test the Y alignment because that's the most important because it's the longest travel because if you take a closer look in here, you see there is this rod right there. And, and that is, is what has to be perfectly aligned or else it will just um, bend and then get caught and then it'll bind. And the way you know it binds is obviously if it doesn't move or it makes a weird noise or a clicking noise, then that's really bad. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with 50% speed and then go across the whole Y rail. And then uh, after that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move that head up there, the drill bit right there to the other side because then it puts all the weight on this rod here. And then we're also gonna, basically we just test both sides if they're both aligned pretty good. And uh, that's what we're gonna do right now. So I've connected everything up and we're gonna go ahead and try this out. So we're gonna try 50% speed first. And then after that, we're gonna go ahead and uh, do uh, higher speed up to 100%. So I'm just gonna boot up my other camera. So we have two views looking at this while I'm doing it. All right, and now, as you can tell, I'm on the PC right here. And there's a small laptop I use for this, which is really nice. Okay, so right now I'm on 50% speed. And as you can tell, it's moving. Okay, so I'm just gonna home in all of them, which is basically like zeroing out so it knows where it's its home position now. So let's go ahead and do that, as you can tell. There we go. This is 50% speed currently. Okay, everything looking good, so far good. Uh, now we're gonna go ahead and try to cross the whole thing. You know, we'll just do 100% from right at the beginning. So let's go ahead and see how this goes. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna hold the arrow key here and we'll see how well that does. So far so good. It's usually towards the end sometimes or the middle. That's beautiful. No binding there. So now what we want to do is we want to, we're going to want to move the, uh, the drill bit to the other side so we can apply the pressure on the other side. Okay, so as you can tell right now, it skipped, but it didn't skip for a normal reason. What happened here is that the wire right there got caught and uh, it didn't travel all the way through. So we're gonna have to home again the X axis because these things are very, very sensitive. So I'm just gonna home in the X axis right now. There we go. So as you can tell right now, it's homing in the X axis again because it skipped because the wire was in the way. So we have to be careful uh, for that not to happen again. Everything looks good. So now we're gonna go ahead and move it again to the other side here. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, beautiful, no skipping because we didn't, get, we didn't catch the wire. Now we're gonna travel again all the way across. To be honest, I didn't expect this, which is really good. So far, there's no binding. And we're at 100% speed. There we go. Beautiful, that is awesome. Now I'm just gonna play with it. Just make sure nothing binds here or there. Okay, now we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop the Z axis and just make sure that's also working. Very nice. I don't wanna go lower than that because I can go lower and I don't wanna go through the everything. Beautiful, it's working, that's really great. So next up is gonna be my TiVo Tarantula and bring in the carbon fiber. So that's the first test done, very happy. So this day's starting out pretty well. Um, and what else are we gonna do now? 
I still don't know. Right now, I'm looking for other 3D printers, like stuff with dual head, uh, dual extruders, so I can just, instead of using two 3D, I don't know, I just, to be honest, I don't know yet. So I'm, I'm still trying to figure out what the hell I'm gonna do right now. But I know one thing is the next step is the TiVo Tarantula. Uh, I'm gonna redo the whole thing. I'm gonna rewire it because it just looks absolutely disgusting. Well, it's not disgusting, it's just really messy. And I kinda just wanna fix it, to be honest. So I'm just gonna leave this in homing position because when you home the CNC, it travels a lot slower. There we go. Okay, and we just home it. It's just gonna do some nice little clicks. Very satisfying clicks, watch. I mean, hopefully you could hear it. So we're just gonna home it. Really nice. It just pressed the three end stops, the Z, X, and Y. So that was really nice. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is uh, bring in my TiVo Tarantula possibly, and then uh, we'll see what we're gonna do from there. So I'll be back in a bit. All right guys, so I did end up working on the TiVo Tarantula, not to what I was planning, but um, actually went a lot easier than I expected, originally expected. So let's take a look here at what I'm doing right now. So right now I just set up, just double checked a while ago, maybe a, let's just say four months ago maybe, I installed the BL Touch and hoping that's going to be aligned and everything as well. Um, I don't remember how good of the configuration I've set up earlier. And it turns out to be actually perfect. As you can tell, it's printing really great. Uh, there isn't any issues right now. This is gonna be like a three hour print to test it. Plus I also need this little piece here. What I'm currently printing is, uh, I'll show you right now. It's kind of like a bridge that I found on Thingiverse. It's too, it's like a really big bridge. For, like, just goes like that and it holds LEDs. So I'm able to light up subjects like a project. For example, the CNC machine here. I'll be able to put this bridge on top. It'll have white LED, which should be pretty good here. So let me just give you an example. I'll have that thing linked down below also. It's this here. There's 10 of these that will go and make like an arc over something and you could put, stick the LEDs on the bottom here. And this way I can have more lighting and it's gonna be more portable and plus it'll give it some really nice RGB effects. Cause I'm gonna put up, I'm gonna set up an RGB LED on that thing. It's gonna be really cool. So, so far it's doing great. I haven't tested the flexible filament yet. I actually thought I was gonna be printing the knob uh, for this down here because I was missing one uh, just for a quick test to see, because I also changed the, uh, what is it called? The extruder here to uh, the Titan. It's like a fake Titan. Uh, because when I purchased the TiVo Tarantula, they actually gave me three. They gave me a regular Bowden, a Titan and a flex extruder. So right now we have the Titan, and I think I calibrated it four months ago, but I don't really remember because I wasn't using it that much. And um, it's doing really quick. It's actually printing faster than Macreality, and it seems more stable, which is uh, pretty interesting. Uh, it's looking good so far. Unfortunately, I decided to use the uh, flexible filament, I mean, not a clear filament, so it'll probably be much harder to see it on camera. Uh, but it's doing great. It's actually doing really good. So. I did not expect that to be honest, so that's really nice. But now what I wanna do is I wanna figure out a way to make them remote. So if this one's in the back, make it somehow, somehow remote control it because I wanna keep the Octoprint next to me on the Creality over there, uh, right there. So I don't know just yet, I'm still thinking of what I'm gonna do. Uh, but so far it's doing great. Next step is gonna be the flexible film. It's actually printing really, really quick and um, yeah, I'm actually really happy with how this is coming out. I didn't expect this at all. So what is next? Now, now I'm printing through an SD card because it has that little SD card thing. And I've just put more tape on the wires, made it look a little bit cleaner. Maybe I'm gonna design something for that right there to cover all the wires. Just basically make it bigger and just cover all this. And the dual Y rail, I still haven't done yet. Um, it's most of the parts are still in my other shop and some parts are here. So I'm going to go to the, my other shop right now. Also pick up some carbon fiber, the carbon fiber sheets that I have. Uh, so I can, you know, we can do something just really quick, just a quick test of some drilling profiles for carbon fiber, but I don't want to leave this just yet. So I'm still thinking of what I should do. Uh, as you can tell, this thing has gotten again, a lot of upgrades. You got the BL touch down there, which is this thing that goes down and it automatically levels the bed. My Creality over there doesn't have it but it actually doesn't need it because it's always just prints perfect. And also got the dual Y, uh, dual Z axes right here, two servos that kit I also got. And 
I also what did I, else, I did something else to this as well. And I also got that aluminum kit, as you can tell right here, which is really good, it's very stable. So I might not really need that dual Y, but we'll see how well it goes. Uh, I saw some someone, I don't remember what channel it was on, some guy, what he did was he basically used one of those action cams and recorded at 120 frames per second or 240 frames per second. And then uh, he just played it in slow motion to see if it's actually wobbling the uh, the bed. So if that's happening, then we're gonna do a dual rail for the Y axis. I think I got uh, one of those really, what are they called? The sliding rails, the really thin ones. I don't remember what the hell I bought. I know I got some of the parts here, but the other one is still closed because I never really had time to do it. But now I really wanna have these things set up and I still have to bring in the rest of my things, which I'll do next, at the end of next week. After this successful, after this is completely successful, then the next step, what I'm planning on doing is obviously setting up my ESC testing setup, uh, like a really nice setup, kind of like just a dedicated area for everything. So I have space to do that and it makes things a lot easier. And it, you know, just doesn't make me like, oh, I have to go move this and I have to go move that in order to do this. So yeah, so I'm gonna set up that dedicated area. And uh, there's gonna be another project coming, uh, which is testing small motors, like 11XX motors, and possibly even those uh, micro brushless motors. So we're gonna design something and then uh, CNC it, and as well as 3D print some of the parts that we're, we're gonna need. Um, and I do have some load cells, so that's gonna be really fun and really interesting. I'll uh, probably do it open hardware and also show you how to, how to build it if you guys wanna see that. And um, yeah, I really, I'm just, I just have a lot of space to do a lot of things now, which is really good. Uh, I also have, just received, by the way, the, the Mobula, the Mobula HD, the Mobula 7 HD. I never used the non-HD version, so I don't know how this one's gonna fly. I still haven't released the leader review, but probably I'll do them together at the same time, so you can, you know, you can pick which one's the best, works best for you, really. Oh, and by the way, the coffee machine is still working really great. Really awesome, very happy with how it's coming out to be. I'll have it linked down below if you wanna go ahead and check it out. I'll have some things linked down below as well. If you wanna check those out, those obviously greatly support the channel and enable me to keep doing these things. So uh, if you guys also like this vlog type of videos, let me know, uh, I could keep doing more of this. If you don't, then I just stop and then just continue doing what I'm doing and then just upload the reviews and projects and stuff. And I don't know if this is the end of the video just yet, but I'm gonna see what else I have left to do and then uh, we'll do it together and then we'll take it from there. All right guys, so I think that's gonna conclude it for this video. I'm about to go get something to eat because I'm getting really hungry and the printer is still going pretty strong. So that's really, really great. And uh, right now I'm just gonna finish editing this video and let me know what you guys think. If you guys like this, I'll keep doing these types of things. There's gonna be more things and more time lapse very soon. I'm just still trying to figure myself out in here. And well, that's it guys, I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And make sure you check out the links down below, it's a great support the channel. And if you can support me on Patreon, that'd be super great. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out guys.